All right. Hello and welcome to episode 100. We are turning the tables on our very own host today. I'm Allie Eldridge, the person you don't see behind the scenes editing all of the episodes. And I'm taking over the mic today to ask Dwayne some questions about his own personal running, this podcast, and the Spark Healthy Runner business. We always have new listeners checking out the podcast or joining our Healthy Runner community on Facebook, so I am going to start the show like you do for every episode with a little dynamic warm-up. Do you mind just sharing with our listeners who you are and what you do? Oh my goodness. Well, first off, can I just say like how much I love this already? Uh, this is great. <laughs> I love you might need to open up the show on a weekly basis. That was awesome. Nice job. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So for those that don't know me and maybe you're just uh, new into our audience, I'm Dr. Dwayne Scotty. I am a physical therapist. I am a passionate runner. I'm a run coach and I'm the founder and owner of Spark Physical Therapy and the Spark Healthy Runner community um, that we have on Facebook as well as the podcast. And I'm just really excited to actually do something a little different today. Um, I'm kind of nervous. Like, I wonder if this is how like guests feel when they come on the show. Like I got little butterflies in my stomach right now. Um, yeah, this should be exciting though. So thanks. Thanks for agreeing, honestly, to do this. And I think this uh, should be front, a fun way to celebrate our hundredth episode. Awesome. Definitely. Of course, I'm excited to be here. Um, so those that are joining us on Facebook, I do want to thank you for jumping on here. And if you are as excited as we are for recording our 100th episode, drop a little 100th party in the comment box for us. All right, Dwayne. So let's get started with these questions today, flipping it around a little bit. So the first question I have for you is what made you want to start your own business and how did it evolve into what Spark Healthy Runner is now? Yeah. So the short answer is um, it was all an accident. Uh, <laughs> there was no master plan. There was no five-year plan, 10-year plan. Hey, when I'm a physical therapist after 15 years, I'm going to open up my own business. Um I really never thought, honestly, uh, the entrepreneurial route or being a business owner was in the cards anymore. Um, when I first graduated PT school, I always said to myself, I want to open up my own practice and I want to be a private practice owner. And then when I got out into the healthcare world, I quickly realized um, how hard that is. And even in my local area, there were so many clinics. Um, and you know, there's so many in our area here, there's so many physician owned clinics. Um, and I specialize in orthopedics, sports medicine. It is extremely hard to compete with the amount of hospital systems, orthopedic practices. Um, there were in my area as well as honestly, a lot of good, um, private practice clinicians who had established practices. So I, I quickly realized that that probably was not going to actually come to fruition. Um, and then the other thing was the whole like, hey, I have no money to actually start a business um, because I'm in, you know, six figures of debt from PT school. Um, so that realization came into, uh, in, into, I guess it came into reality. And I was like, I'm never going to have enough money to actually invest in a business and, you know, to start a business. So I, I really didn't think I would ever do that um, until really pretty much, you know, 15 years out, I guess, or 14 years out in my journey here. Um, it just happened by accident. So I was, you know, I transitioned to teaching full-time in the university and I was treating um, part-time. And as I was treating, you know, continuing to kind of work with active um, individuals. I actually started out, and this is where you and I met, uh, is through the performing arts realm, right? So I grew up a dancer. Um, Allie and I have known each other for definitely over 10 years now, I would say, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we met at our local dance studio here um, in Wallingford, uh, Connecticut. Uh, shout out to Adam. Um, <laughs> and you know, I started working with a lot of um, dancers and performing artists. And then I was asked by my daughter's gymnastics coach to, you know, provide some on-site services. 
And they had a massage therapist who was actually, you know, treating many of the gymnasts. I specialize in performing arts. I've always worked in sports medicine. Like gymnasts are ridiculous athletes. Um, and they're also artistic, kind of like dancers. Uh, so then I started kind of specializing in the gymnastics medicine route and uh, went down that avenue. And that was actually the beginning of Spark Physical Therapy. Um, actually, no. Actually, I don't even know if I've ever shared this on the podcast before, but that was actually the beginning of Scotty Performing Arts PT. Um, that was actually the, uh, the first name of my business. And that was uh, probably about a year, maybe it was that name. And then I quickly realized um, that I myself was a runner and I wanted to be able to serve my running community and my running um, peeps a little bit more. So hence the name change. And we changed it to Spark Physical Therapy. And then it kind of was focused on runner, dancer, gymnast. And then um, as, as time passed, you know, and my focus really went into uh, the running community. And that's pretty much when this kind of podcast started. And then, you know, I just solely started helping uh, runners out. So to make a long story short, it was a big accident. I never planned on it. Um, it was something I kind of fell into and then actually realized how much I loved being able to help, like whether it was, you know, gymnasts and dancers in that area or runners outside of the traditional medical model box of insurance pays for four to six visits. And you're going to be seen at the same time as other people. And so just to be able to actually provide the care that my, you know, clients deserved um, and to also be able to help them stay active and do the activity they love and not just, you know, be able to see them because they can't go up and down stairs or they can't walk. Right. So a lot of times insurance companies don't pay for you to do your sport. Right. And that's kind of where I saw a big gap in getting my athletes back to sport. Um, because unfortunately, um, the model that we we're in really didn't allow that. So that's been, uh, it's been a blessing to be able to do that. Honestly. Awesome. 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 So much, but so good. I still have the Scotty performing arts tank top somewhere <laughs> from forever ago. <laughs> you're going to have to, it. you're going to have to take a picture of that and then post, post it within it. the healthy runner Facebook group. The OG, the OG. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, so in that case, finding out that you wanted to do more of the runners because you're a runner, how did you start running? Why did you start running? Um, and can you tell us a little bit more about your personal history with your running story? Yeah. So I was definitely, I would consider myself a gym rat, so to speak, um, ever since college. So my roommate, you know, in high school days really, you know, went to the gym a little bit, but definitely not consistently. My roommate was a big gym guy and he was my PT kind of bud all throughout school. And, you know, him and I would go to the gym all the time consistently. And I really fell in love with exercise, right? Like realized the physical benefit, the mental, you know, relief it provided me, the stress relief going through grad school, um, studying for all those exams, like even finals week, like the gym's like totally empty. Me and my roommate would be working out because we knew that we needed to get our workouts in, in order to actually be able to study and be able to perform, right? And do the things that we needed to do. So really never ran, just ran for cardio at the gym. Kind of one of those types of like, Hey, I want to lean out, right. I want to get more shredded. I want to get more muscle. So you can see my muscle. So I would run, you know, for cardio at the gym. And then in 2000 and let's see, this had been 2010. We we're uh, doing a little Friday night lights in my backyard, volleyball style. I would have my buddies over, have some beverages and play some volleyball. Um, and one of those days I landed, uh, went up for a spike, landed on my leg and I felt a pop. And then I started having hip pain after that. So to make a long story short, I went through the whole rehab process, um, kind of rehab myself, saw my colleagues and got my pain levels down, but it wound up turning out that I did need surgery. So I wound up getting a hip arthroscopy to repair a torn labrum, but then I also had a torn piece of cartilage, what we call a chondral defect. 
So I went through that whole surgery. And then after that, that was really the first time I've ever been like down for the count, like not working out. So it was right in the winter time. It was January that it happened, January, 2011, my surgery. Cause I remember it was like snowed like every three days. So trying to walk non-weight bearing on crutches with snow and ice on the roads and go to PT and go to the gym. Uh, because I had to work out my upper body, of course, um, was definitely a challenging part. And I was kind of out of shape, right? I was like, I gained weight more than I've ever had. Um, and I really wanted to get back in shape. So when I was released from my surgeon, I was like, okay, how am I going to like get back in shape to where I was? And he's like, you know, go run. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, just don't do it on the treadmill. So I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. That's all I ever do is <laughs> run on the treadmill in the gym. And he's like, you know, explain to me that that wouldn't be good for the area basically in your hip that you wind up having labral tears in the front part. And when you run on a treadmill, so just to not scare anyone who runs on a treadmill, by the way, this is only if you have a labral tear and a hip pathology that maybe it wouldn't be best to have your femoral head move forward because the tread moves backward. So it causes this kind of anterior glide to your femoral head. So he's like, don't run on the treadmill, go outside. So I go outside. This was probably late February, early March in Connecticut cold as all can be. I'm like, I am not running outside, but I really wanted to get in shape. So I would leave like Planet Fitness. That was a gym outside at the time and, you know, go for my first run. And I remember it being so cold and it being so tired. And I was like short of breath. I was like, wow, this is like pretty terrible, but I enjoyed actually being outside. Like I hadn't been outside for like exercise since I was like a kid, literally like playing basketball in the street, you know? So it was like kind of cool, like do something outdoors. Cause like we mentioned, I was a dancer and I danced, but that's all indoors, right? You're like not outside. So I really fell in love with being like outside and getting like fresh air. And then it just grew after that. It was kind of like, oh, I'm starting to run now. Oh yeah. I'm getting back in shape. Oh, let me see if I could run a 5k oh, let me see if I could actually do it in a race and challenge myself. So Labor Day Road Race, uh, 2011, that was my first 5K in New Haven. And now we're, I think, 67 road races later. Um, oh. <laughs> I think, what am I at for 27 half marathons? And yeah, I've kind of caught the running bug, so to speak, and uh, just fell in love with it, honestly, and now really have a passion um, for running and just you know, being able to run for the rest of my life, honestly, is like my goal is like literally to be like that guy, that like 80 year old guy at the road race, like always taking the medal, like always placing every race I do because I'm like literally the oldest guy there. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's so great. And such a great story for how you came back from an injury, how like an injury was what kind of put you into running, which I think kind of like sums up like spark healthy runner, like in the best way that it's, you know, preventing us from having those injuries. Um, so that's really interesting and really awesome. Um, so tying together spark healthy runner and your running story, um, what made you want to start the podcast in the first place? Yeah. So podcasts were interesting because as I was going through, I kind of mentioned before that I kind of went down the academia route and I uh, got a PhD. Um, so that was like six years um, of, you know, hell that I don't want to think about anymore. Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, a grind, like working full time, um, teaching part time, you know, going to school essentially. And one of the things that I did, you might laugh at me, but like we had these kind of like comprehensive exams that I had to study for. So I would literally record myself like going over my like study notes in audio form, knowing that I like had to go outside and like shovel the driveway or I had to like do something outside of my yard. Right. And I was like, all right, while I'm out there, why don't I just like listen to these study notes so I can like just lock in my brain and I could remember this information. So I started doing that. And then I heard like, someone mentioned something about podcasts. I'm like, what the heck are podcasts? Like I had no <laughs> clue. There was a PT guy, uh, shout out to the PT podcast. If any PTs listen to this. Um, so, you know, I started listening to Jimmy McKay and it was like, wow, this is kind of cool. It keeps me entertained and I can like learn some knowledge. And so I was like kind of interested in that. And then it just, you know, I started listening to different types of podcasts and then I started listening to running podcasts 
And then when I was out on my runs, I'm like, you know what, to pass the time, let me learn something as I'm out here for like an hour, right? Like, let me just learn some information. So I started listening to a bunch of running podcasts and um, I was like, wow, this is pretty neat. And it's really my main form of learning. I'm like very visual and audio focused. I've never been a reader. I wish I was um, probably a lot <laughs> smarter, um, but like reading any, like we were joking about textbooks uh, just before we got on this uh, about our textbooks are like good for propping up our computer screens. <laughs> um, but I've never been good at like reading chapters or reading books for leisure. That's just not in my DNA. My girls don't have it either. And I wish <laughs> they did. Uh, my cousin Brett though, he is like the reader of the family. Um, <laughs> but you know, audio is like how I learn. And, you know, I just fell in love with listening to podcasts and I'm like, Hey, I'm a runner out here, like getting in my miles. I'm spending, you know, X amount of time a week actually out on the road. I'm sure there are other runners out there that may be able to benefit from like some of the things I help runners with. So then that's when it really started of, you know, Hey, should I start my own podcast? And, Initially, honestly, I, if I, if I like literally gave you truth serum right now, I really thought that I would probably do 10, 15 episodes tops. And then I would probably not have time for it, or it would just be like such a failure that, um, it wouldn't even work. And here we are like a hundred episodes later. Wow, um, yeah. And it's not that those first episodes were like any good either. Like those of you who are listening to this right now, you know what I'm talking about. Like those of you who just got in our audience, because I'll get this all the time. They're like, oh yeah, I'm still working back at like episode 10 or 50. I'm like, oh, yikes. That was like, <laughs> those are bad. Like, please don't listen to those. Um, but a lot of people like to like listen from the beginning and work their way up to kind of catch up on some of the episodes. But yeah, I really like fell in love with it. And then honestly, if I didn't have you, um, because as Allie mentioned before, she's our podcast wizard. So she does all the editing. So I was literally spending a good like two hours of my week um, trying to be an editor of a podcast. And those are not my strengths. Um, so I'm very fortunate if I didn't have you, honestly, the podcast probably wouldn't have continued because mm. I knew I wouldn't have had time. I would have got frustrated. I would have not loved doing the podcast anymore um, because that was not my strength, right? Like that is not what I enjoyed is playing around in garage band and like editing and cutting and, and this and that. Um, so I thank you honestly for making this um, somewhat successful, I would say getting to a hundred episodes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. I love doing this. It's so fun. I look forward to it every week and I look forward to listening back and hearing what was said. And like, I learned from it too, which is really awesome. And it's always something new and fun and it's, I love doing it. So it's awesome. And I'm so glad that you did it. It's such a fun thing. And I think it's so awesome for our community. Um, so on top of all of that, you recently became a run coach. And I want to know why you became a run coach, how that kind of fit into your whole journey um, and what your favorite part of not only being a physical therapist for runners has been, but also having that coaching aspect with it now too. Yeah. So I, I guess I could thank COVID for, for that, honestly, um, because I did actually take the run certification right when everything shut down, um, when it became online because it's kind of one of those things. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this of, you know, not doing something because you never had time for it. Um, that was one of those things. And I always became frustrated as a physical therapist who worked with runners um, that you would see runners that would constantly come back into your clinic because they were constantly injured. And it wasn't because they weren't maybe even doing the exercises I told them to do um, or recommended they should do, or we, you know, hadn't, um, you know, addressed like the root cause of their pain. We did, but it was the training errors that they were making in their running and not having the guidance of how to train properly um, with proper progression, um, how to actually get faster without actually like running your body into the ground and getting an injury. Um, so those are the things I always like were frustrated with, because again, 
my hands were kind of tied in that I was the physical therapist. I only saw runners when they had pain, they came in. I did a fantastic job of identifying the root cause of their pain, getting them out of pain, doing some really great manual therapy treatments, exercises, right? Get them to buy into what we're doing. They get out of pain. They are kind of released to start running either by myself or their doctor. And then it's like, oh, insurance cuts you off. You can't come back. So there was never like, I was never able to bridge that gap between like being injured and performing at where runners want to perform and like hit a half marathon PR or get faster in their 5k time or run their first marathon and successfully be able to actually finally build to a 14, a 16, an 18 mile long run without having their IT bands, you know, blow up on them and then have the sharp knee pain. Um, so it, it was always like an element uh, that I felt like I was missing, honestly, in being able to like help runners really, truly get back to running. Not like, oh, you're released to start a return to run program. And now we're going to do walk, run intervals. And then we're going to, right? Like I always knew that and I gave those to my patients and, but like to actually get back to where they used to be at and you know, I think kind of mentioning what we were saying before, like after my hip surgery, it was like, I knew how important that was for me to get back to where I used to be as a recreational athlete, right? It, whether you want to call it just, you know, working out consistently and just getting in like shape and then being able to dance at that time when I was dancing. Um, so that was kind of the reason then COVID happened. And it was like my clinic for in-person visits shut down for, you know, a good three weeks, four weeks, really. And I was like, Hey, I have this time in my hands. Hey, this course is now online. So I did the RRCA certification program. That's where I met coach Whitney. So like, it's like weird how stuff happens and, you know, so glad that I was able to meet her. Uh, we went to the same exact uh, course and yeah, the principles were great. Like there were a lot of things I heard at PT related, you know, continuing education courses, things I learned on my own from being my own, you know, running journey, but really not the full package of putting it all together. And then also like designing run plans for people who weren't like me. Like I was getting pretty good at like my caliber of runner, but I really knew nothing about the couch to 5k runner. I really knew nothing about the Boston qualifier runner, right. And how to actually build run plans for those types of runners. So that was super useful. Um, it was super helpful. And then really kind of sparked, you know, a change in my business where I wasn't just a physical therapist anymore, that now I was a coach. Um, who was a physical therapist. And now I was finally able to really bridge that gap between like being an injured runner and then actually being a like successful runner, like the runner that you want to be. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. Hopefully it did. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the whole, it's funny, you just said bridging the gap because the whole time you were saying that I was thinking, wow, he really used this to bridge the gap between being a physical therapist and being a runner. And it kind of like put those two worlds together for you to give you that opportunity to do that. So with that being said, having your background as a physical therapist, how have you seen that kind of help you as a run coach? Um, obviously you're seeing runners with common problems, but how are you kind of balancing leaving the PT role behind but how is it helping you and letting yourself be a run coach to help people in that way? Yeah. So I think it's really the, all the experience um, that I've had managing the common running related injuries. Mm -hmm. So whether it's Achilles tendon pain, plantar fasciitis, runner's knee, um, IT band syndrome, hamstring tendon pain, right? Like all of those I've rehabbed so many runners back from that successfully where I, I do work with a lot of runners who've been to multiple medical providers, whether it's PT, Cairo, like any, right, any other provider, and they're just not getting the results because either their provider doesn't understand running, they're not a runner themselves, don't treat a lot of runners, and that's like no fault to their own um, because everyone has their strengths. Like if you sent me a patient who had a stroke or 
you know, had MS, like in the beginning of my career, I did used to see those patients. And I was like, okay, if you sent me someone now, like you don't want me treating them. Um, that would not be my strength. Um, I think we definitely, um, you know, especially as you get experience as any type of clinician, you're going to wind up like niching down, right. Getting really good at one thing. And I kind of recognized early on in my career that I was like, okay at, treating, you know, more of the, um, you know, I would say like lower level population or, you know, um, maybe some of the less active, um, you know, members in our community, I was okay at treating them. I wasn't great. Um, I always resonated more with the active community members. Um, cause I guess, you know, with my own history, I think that really was a better fit, but, um, you know, really kind of knowing, I guess, to answer your question is, is just having the experience of dealing with those injuries and then knowing how that impacts someone if they start getting an ache or pain, or as some people call it a niggle, um, in their knee or in their foot and ankle. And then as their run coach, I'm able to troubleshoot that like right away. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, let me know what's exactly going on. Let's, and I, I just see that Christy, I'm just thinking of you. I see your name popping up here on live. What's going on? How are you? Congrats on your marathon, first marathon. Um, but I remember our conversation specifically, Christy, um, when you were having this pain that popped up and we jumped on a call and I was able to literally identify what was going on, diagnose your current situation, and then give you the tools to be able to overcome that. So it did not become a long-term problem, right. That hindered your training. And a lot of, you know, unfortunately what runners are told is when they start getting that niggle, when they start getting that ache and pain, they, they're told if they went to the doctor, they went to the walk-in clinic, whatever they say, that's eh, cause you've been running, like just stop running and wait for the pain to go away and then try running again. And I'm sorry, but that is rarely ever the case for most of the common injuries. Um, so really being able to troubleshoot those things early on and prevent them from even starting to actually be in quote unquote injury um, and to keep runners along their running journey and their plan and not having two weeks, three weeks that they missed in their half marathon or their marathon training cycle now. And now they're going into this race, kind of like fingers crossed, kind of like, Oh, let's cross everything. And hopefully I get past the finish line. Right. So like being able to do that, I think has been extremely helpful and a little bit different than, cause there are a lot of awesome running coaches out there. Um, and we have some awesome running coaches on our healthy runner team. Um, but, you know, if someone's working with Coach Lou or Coach Whitney, Coach Latoya, Coach Cat, and they start getting that injury, that's where I jump in and I kind of streamline that process where we all connect and we communicate as a team to get someone out of this little hiccup that they're having. So it doesn't become a big hiccup and then they have to actually, you know, curtail their training. Um, so I think that's probably been the most beneficial, um, aspect of my background as a physical therapist, um, in kind of coaching runners. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I think something I remember from way back when I was editing stuff and creating the PDFs and everything is you would always say like, we're not running to train, we're training to run. And I think that that has always been something so pivotal, like in my mind, thinking about spark, um, and thinking about you as the owner and the founder and everything is just that idea of staying healthy and staying running throughout an injury. And like you said, it's not necessarily actually an injury yet, but just that ache and pain and continuing to run through it. So I think it's awesome that you're able to kind of get that head on before it turns into something more and prevents our runners from running. Um, so with all of that being said, kind of talking more about the motivational side of being a businessman behind the scenes, um, what has been your biggest motivation in continuing to grow spark, um, as the healthy runner community and as your business? Um, wow. Um, I think the motivation I've always, I guess, liked a personal challenge. Um, anything in life I've always kind of felt as a challenge. Like we talked about the PhD thing before, not that that was like 
the the best challenge I ever wanted. It was a, certainly a huge challenge. So I guess I like to be challenged. So that's been a motivation, um, being able to provide some, you know, freedom for my family, honestly, um, has been a huge motivating factor. Um, you know, finally, after like 18 years of being a professional, um, trying to get out of, you know, a huge, you know, debt cycle that started with me, you know, going to um, graduate school. Um, and unfortunately, you know, growing up in a single parent household and not having a father who contributed to my college education, like all those things um, is, was definitely a motivating factor. And then I would say the continued feedback that I get, right? So like that feedback is definitely, it motivates me to like say, hey, you know, maybe there is something here, right? There is this community that we're creating and this message that um, should be heard by others who don't know some of the strategies that we talk about on the podcast or within our Facebook community. And, you know, that definitely motivates me to, to continue, right. And to continue going. And, and now I see that, you know, it, it is helping people. So, you know, that's definitely an area where I, I really, you know, see that as a motivating factor. Yeah, absolutely. That's so great. Um, so with that being said, what's your favorite part of building the spark, um, healthy runner community into what it is today? What's been your favorite memory, favorite part? Oh, I guess, honestly, starting from scratch and just like learning it all on my own initially, um, before actually investing in any coaching myself, business coaching, um, learning from others who have are, you know, steps ahead of me. And that was kind of fun doing that. And the one aspect for me that has been different than my whole career has been the um, creative element and just having the ability to be creative. Um, because in healthcare, you can be creative in like your treatments and your exercises <laughs> you give patients, but for the most part, it's standard documentation it needs to be this way you are functioning within an organization that has rules and regulations that need to be this way. So having this outlet, honestly, to be myself and share things how I want to share them and, you know, do creative things on Canva and, you know, make graphics and make videos and, you know, just bring out the creative side of, you know, what I do. Um, like that, that was really fun. And I, I really enjoyed that. And I hope that's like, definitely as you know, the business grows that that's something that, you know, I continue to be able to do is have that creative element. Like I know you enjoy doing a lot of that. And coach Whitney's doing a lot more of that now as we're growing, but I still love getting Canva and like creating a nice little graphic where I still love like shooting a video of an exercise and, you know, having fun with it or just like going live, you know, within our healthy runner Facebook community and just being a little wacky, like right after a run and just like, you know, being on cloud nine and just sharing whatever's on my mind um, and not having to think about, you know, Oh, is this how it should be done? Or is this how, it's going to, you know, what are others going to think? And, and I think just having that freedom of feeling like I'm able to be creative and, you know, create content and share um, with others has been honestly really fun. And um, the other part that, you know, is definitely, you know, one of my favorite parts is just seeing the community grow. So, and, and just seeing people come together and just seeing what we're building, you know, it started with the Facebook group um, here kind of locally in Connecticut. And then it's just growing now where we have, you know, runners across country, runners across the globe who are connecting with each other within our, our community. And then runners that I talk to now that I jump on calls with, and they're like, I've been listening to the podcast for six months and like just bringing people together and like that sense of community has definitely been like my favorite part in that 
I'm able to create this something that's a little bigger than honestly just myself, right? And where it was as a PT, it was myself and my patient. <laughs> it was just <laughs> two people like getting the benefit of anything that I shared or had to say, right? And now it's it's kind of just being able to, you know, reach more people and help more people that has definitely been my favorite part of all this, honestly. I love that. Um, I think that's so great. And <clears throat> it's been fun for me to watch from behind the scenes, how much everything has been growing too. So it's really cool to hear that that's kind of something that sticks out for you too. Um, so with Spark, how have you felt like you've really seen your accomplishments and what did, what do you feel like your biggest accomplishment has been? Wow. Um, great question. I guess just really continuing to grow and, um, not, not really, uh, stop when there are bumps in the road, like mm -hmm. the resilience aspect of it. Like anyone who's listening to this, that, you know, started their own business and is a business owner can relate is just, like there's definitely ups and downs. It's not just only ups. Um, there's many downs. There's many times you're going to question yourself. There's many bumps in the road, but just being consistent. It's kind of like running. It's like, you have to be consistent. And I've literally showed up to, uh, these Facebook lives for, I would say almost going on three years straight, at least once a week, um, for our audience and our healthy runner Facebook group, even before the podcast was created, um, those started first and where I would just do it once a week and we'd cover a topic and, you know, just being consistent, I think is probably, um, like, I feel like my biggest accomplishment in that it's allowing it to be where it is now and continuing to grow. Um, and honestly being able to, allow others like yourself, like you mentioned that you really enjoy what you're doing and allow coach Whitney, coach Lou, coach Latoya, coach Kat to like do what they're loving doing right now. And I feel like that's an accomplishment is that I'm now giving other people the opportunity to really live out their passion and like what they really want to do. Yeah, absolutely. That's so great. Um, yeah. Jumping back like a little bit. I just, I just thought it again, like love Canva, love doing it. We love Canva. It's our favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. <laughs> um, no, but that's, that's so awesome that it's so fulfilling for you that it's, you know, your coaching team and then the community itself. And, um, just, I mean, in that consistency aspect of it, like I give you major props, like I'm sure there are plenty of days where you're just like, zonked like as a dad and as you know a professor and everything that you do you're just like oh, I could take a nap right now but you like have that consistency and like you're always here for spark and I commend you for that and I think it's so amazing so it's awesome to hear that you kind of view that for yourself too um and it doesn't go unnoticed for sure hey and that's something that I just think that and I gotta give a shout out to her especially because I've been thinking about her a lot during the holidays is my mom um you know, for those that don't know, I did lose my mom this past year um, due to COVID. And, you know, she was always on me as a kid to kind of get things done. And I hated it as a kid. <laughs> and, um, but I came to appreciate that. Um, so those that are parents out there and you hate when your teenager rolls her eyes, because I know mine certainly does. Um, <laughs> you know, they hate it now, but they will appreciate it when they get older. And I know I was one of those that did appreciate it, um, that she did instill those values in me to like, just like, there is no substitute for hard work. I was definitely never the smartest kid in any of my classrooms ever. Um, but hard work, you know, and, and consistency and being persistent and being resilient is, you know, you can be successful. And, you know, I thank her for that, honestly. Um, of instilling that like work ethic in me early on in life that I think has, you know, really shaped me into who I am today. So I thank, yeah. thank mom for that. Shout out mom. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so staying kind of on the accomplishment train, um, going back to your story as a runner, what do you feel like your biggest accomplishment as a runner has been um, today? Hmm. Um, so I guess, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I would definitely say is 
probably my biggest accomplishment, even though it hasn't been my fastest races, has really been these last four years of running consistently and not having any major injuries whatsoever. Um, beginning of my running career um, that started 10 years ago, I was injured a lot and hence why I felt like I've mastered how to overcome upper hamstring tendon pain, how to <laughs> overcome runner's knee, uh, because I had them too, how to overcome posterior tibial tendon pain. Um, I knew exactly like what my runners were feeling um, because I felt them as well, because I had a lot of training errors when I first started and I wasn't doing the run specific exercises that I have learned along the way and have implemented into my training. Um, so I think that's really been my biggest accomplishment because, you know, faster times, things like that, that stuff can ebb and flow. And I think just looking back and, and again, being able to run a good six to seven races per year, three half marathons, a couple of five Ks, maybe a 10 K and, and just being consistent because I know like the benefits of running are going to far outweigh any like physical benefit, like just allowing me to be the person I am is what running does. So being consistent and being able to do it because I'm not getting injured, I think is a huge accomplishment <laughs> as a runner. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and kind of on the other end of the spectrum, what's been your biggest setback? Yeah. And I, I guess I could say, um, you know, my one of the biggest accomplishments, I guess I would have probably said like four years ago would have been like running a marathon. Right. So I've only run one marathon and that would have been like my accomplishment, but it was also my biggest setback, I think, because it was after that, that my half marathon time started slowing down and it, it's, you know, in hindsight and looking back now, it was really because I didn't recover properly after that. I didn't actually even train properly for the marathon. And I wound up, it really set me back in my like running performance wise. So I think that was probably the biggest, um, setback as a runner is, you know, losing speed on my half marathon time and like having to actually come to grips with that and knowing it wasn't like one race or two races and like my times were falling, you know, in my late thirties and hitting 40, they were like falling, like they were going the wrong direction essentially. And you're like, Whoa, what is going on here? Like, I want to try to hit PRs, you know, for the rest of my life. And I do feel that I still am young enough, um, just turned 42 guys, um, that I can get back to those times. And I think, I guess going on the positive side, I always like to think of the glass half full, um, is that the times have improved these last like four years that I mentioned, that I didn't have an injury. So they're going in the right direction. They're just taking some time. You know, it's not like when you first start running, you see a lot of like, peaks and like high peaks and valleys. And then I feel like you definitely level off to like where your fitness level is at some point. And you do need that spark or you need that like surge to like get to the next level. Um, and that's where I invested in run coaching myself. And I had coach Lou, you know, train me for my last half marathon. And I ran my first, you know, fastest one in five years or 15 tries. So like we need that next level to kind of be able to progress, um, as runners, so I don't know, I guess the setback really the long answer here was, you know, <laughs> getting slower times and like being like, okay with that and figuring out how to overcome that. Definitely. Yeah. And kind of sounds back to what you were saying before, like you always like that challenge. So it's like, you always have something to reach for and something to push you a little bit harder to be like the best runner that you can be, which is really cool. Um, in this point of your journey. Um, so taking a little break from all the running stuff and spark stuff, um, outside of the podcast, outside of running and outside of running spark, healthy runner, what do you enjoy doing? What do you do? What's a, like a day in the life of Dwayne? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well, I would have told you like years ago, it used to be like sports and like Yankees were my team. Um, but I really don't have time for any of that anymore. Um, <laughs> so I haven't watched really any sports in a couple of years now. Um, you know, I, I definitely 
like, and I used to like really getting out of my yard. So I still do. Um, so like landscaping stuff, I love, you know, love planting the flowers and kind of planting some perennials, moving things around, splitting stuff out in the yard and just getting out there and doing those types of things, um, has definitely been something that I enjoy, but really, you know, right now it, it's really seeing my girls and, you know, spending time with them, whether it's going to their volleyball games, um, you know, when we're able to have a family dinner and we're able to play board games, like we're a big board game family. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, love whether it's rummy cube sequins, uno, like, you know, any of that stuff. Um, like we were just at my cousin's for Thanksgiving and, you know, we just play games as a family. That's like something we've always did since, you know, we were kids and, you know, we always did with my mom and, you know, sorry is another family favorite. Um, but I guess like my, definitely decompress relaxation time is like just grabbing, you know, a glass of wine and like sitting in front of the fireplace. Unfortunately, I don't get to do that very often, but when I do, um, I really get to en enjoy it. And like, mm. you know, it's like, that's my kind of quiet space, um, where I could really like kind of decompress a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> I know. And I've, I've known you for so long with the girls. Like I've known Gabby since she was a um, little mini at the dance studio and she was my little one. So I know how like busy you guys are. So I always think, I literally always think I'm like, how does Dwayne do it? Like, how does this man do it all? So I am so inspired by you. And I think it's great that you have some things um, outside of the business that you enjoy to do as well. Cause you put your heart and soul into this. Um, so on that same little path I've known you for so long I have known you um since before spark was a thing since before Scotty performing arts and everything I mean it's been really amazing to me to watch how the business has grown um and to see you grow it from the beginning um and now that we're recording episode 100 do you have any advice for people trying to start their own podcast or their own business and kind of on on that way your advice for the newbies yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I would say the biggest advice I can give is just get out of your own, you know, head and your limiting beliefs. Um, if it's something that you want to do, just like go for it. Um, you know, you're going to question yourself, um, whether or not you're starting the podcast. Like, it seems like there's a lot to get started, which there is honestly. Um, it definitely, definitely was overwhelming, um, to really learn how to start a podcast and be able to record the first couple episodes and like how to do all of that and, you know, promote the podcast, um, to get it kind of off the ground, but you just have to do it. And like I said, if you listen to a lot of those early episodes, you know, they're probably not great by any means. Um, I haven't listened to them in quite some time. I'm sure if I did, I'd be pretty embarrassed. And, but that's like anything in life. Right. And that's honestly part of the growth. Like I actually, I was talking to someone yesterday, um, who I jumped on a call with and yeah, they share, share that they were like listening ever since the beginning, like when things, and they kind of knew like how much it evolved. And I think that's definitely been, um, you know, that's going to happen. So I think just get started, get consistent with whatever you do and be true to yourself. I think in the beginning too, I, I felt that you needed to do what you thought others wanted to hear or what you thought people um, expected of you. And I would just say, be true to yourself because I think where my messaging and at least seems to be resonating with people really started um, growing and taking you know, some momentum behind it has been when I really was true to myself and like shared what I really wanted to share versus what I thought <laughs> others wanted to hear or others thought I should be sharing, if that makes sense. So just being true to yourself, just start <clears throat> yesterday. That's the best time to start is <laughs> yesterday and just go for it and just be consistent and have fun with it, honestly. And if it's not something that you love and it's not something that you have a passion for, don't do it. Like, don't do it for the wrong reasons. Like for me with the podcast, it was a passion project. Like I never knew we'd be a hundred episodes later right now. It was kind of like, I was a podcast junkie, right? I was like, love listening to podcasts. So it's like, Hey, this is 
maybe let me start this as a hobby. Let me start a podcast. Right. And it was, it was fun. It was like a challenge, but I had fun with it and I enjoyed it. And I love podcasts. If you're someone who doesn't even listen to podcasts and, and you know, like podcast, like, why would you go into podcasts? Right. It's kind of like me, you know, trying to sit down and write a book. Like I just mentioned, I don't read, <laughs> I don't, I'm terrible at writing. I'm not going to sit down and force myself to write a book, you know, because I'm going to dread every single second of it. Right. So I like talking, obviously, right. I can ramble here for hours uh, during this episode, but so I'm doing something that I love living my passion. So you guys can do the same if you want to start your own podcast or start your own business for that matter. Um, you, and you don't need a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Start, start low, um, start minimalist. That's what I did, like literally like with nothing and no money, no anything. I just started from the ground and then worked my way and, you know, was able to scale and grow um, to what we are today. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's such good advice for people in general too, to just not be afraid of what the norm is and what's expected and just go for it and, and find your passion and what you're doing. So I think that's amazing. Um, and kind of going off that advice thing now that you've been doing this for four years and you're on this, um, you know, entrepreneurial businessman kind of journey. Um, is there anything that you would have done differently looking back on how you started and everything you've done? Hmm. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, the, I, I would say I would have definitely invested in coaching myself earlier on to get guidance, um, with the business. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I did mention that I kind of did a lot of things on my own. I learned a lot, like I'm a lifelong learner. So I would literally listen to every single business podcast out there during my runs, not just running podcasts and really learn strategies on my own. Um, and, last year when I actually invested in business coaching, um, and really saw the benefits of that, I, you know, hindsight, you know, realized that if I did that sooner, then I would have been able to, you know, kind of get to that next step in the business sooner. So I think really that's the only thing. And then initially I would say, you know, kind of the advice I just gave is, is kind of, you know, just be, be, you know, yourself and just be true to yourself and don't be afraid to, to put yourself out there. Um, in the beginning, I, I'll admit, I was definitely afraid to put myself out there. And, you know, I think that's reflected. Like if you, if you go on my Instagram or you start scrolling back like three or four years ago, you'd be like, you know, who is this stiff guy, or, <laughs> you know? Um, so I, I think that's really it, honestly, um, is I would have just kind of, invested a little earlier on like paying people essentially to teach me where they were a couple of years ago, right? Whether it's doing the podcast or, you know, growing a run coaching business um, is just kind of doing that, I guess, a little sooner. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so instead of looking to the past now, I want to ask you about the future um, and where you kind of see Spark going. So where do you see the podcast being in five years um, and just Spark in general? Where do you see Spark Healthy Runner being um, in the next five years? So your five-year plan. I know that's weird, right? Because I said I never had a five-year plan. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the only expectations I really have is that in five years from now that I'm going to continue to love and have the passion that I have right now today for Spark Healthy Runner um, in five years from now. So whether or not I'm literally, you know, doing an event at the New York City Marathon or like, you know, run Disney weekend and I'm hosting like live podcast interviews, who knows, right? Yeah. Like that could happen. Um, who knows? Um, or you know, I'm doing, um, you know, we, we are the, the place that runners think about of how to actually not only train for a race, because you can get those anywhere, right? You can literally Google like how to train for a half marathon or half marathon training plans, and you'll get every free plan off the internet or 
any other coaching business or run coaches. And there are many great ones out there. Um, but I want us to be known for not only getting you to your running goal, but providing you the tools that you're going to have for the longevity, right? So you can be a lifelong runner. And when someone thinks about, you know, maybe being frustrated in the medical, you know, community as a runner and not getting answers for their injury, like us being the place that they think of. And it's like, people recommend like, Oh, spark healthy runner. Like these are the guys that you need to, you know, get some answers, right? So you can get back to your running goal. So I guess that's what I, I want us to be known for. I want to continue to grow and allow our coaches to, you know, live out their passions and be able to help runners how they want to help runners and be able to impact their lives. Um, just like, like now that we've, you know, launched our one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, programs for all of our coaches and, you know, seeing the results that they're getting with their runners that I've kind of seen myself personally this past year, since I've really been doing that. Um, like I want more of them to experience that and be able to really have that impact in our running community. Um, so I guess, you know, multiple fronts, but most of all, I, I really want to love and have the passion that I have today um, in five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 30 years. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I just told you, like, I'm consistent. I'm resilient. Like, you're not getting rid of me. Um, I'm not going to, like, pack up my microphone and, uh, <laughs> and my video camera here and, and leave. Like, I'm here to, like, serve the running community. Like, I finally found like the people, like you guys are my peeps, like that I can give back to and serve and, you know, continue to improve. And that like, I'm not going to be perfect, but I'm going to continue to improve and I'm going to find ways to get better. And I'm going to find ways to better serve you. Um, and I'll be here for the longevity, just like running. Like I'm going to be here. Like, hopefully when you're listening to podcasts, if podcasts are even a thing, in like 15 or 20 years that you're still listening to the healthy runner podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and I know, guess I'm, gonna... I'm sorry. Keep going. Can I just share like a dream goal would be like to get in the top 10 of like running podcast. Um, we're consistently in the top 30 every week. Like I get an email that kind of sends me the charts of, you know, running podcast. And I think if I, I could break top 10, um, the only way we're going to do that, by the way, is those that are listening to this subscribe, <laughs> hit the subscribe button and maybe like hit a rating and review and like, let others know what you think about the show. That's how more people find it and start listening. Um, like that would be a dream of mine, I guess. Um, but I've already been, you know, fulfilled in like, I've, I've been blessed with just like networking with so many people in the running space, you know, especially this past year, um, who have other huge successful shows, whether it was like Ali Feller or Matt Chittum, right. Kerry Tullifson, like I've been blessed to be able to interact with them. And like, mm -hmm. I see what they're doing and how successful, you know, their journey has been. And if I could create or be the space that is the, the kind of health and, and medical lane of like running podcast where again, like we're known for, you know, keeping runners healthy and stay running, even if you have an injury, um, and, and that resource, honestly, for runners to be able to turn to, uh, would be like the goal of mine. That'd be my dream. Absolutely. Um, we can do it. I believe in us. We'll get there. We'll make that <laughs> dream come true. Um, no, I think that's so amazing. And I'm so excited personally to see how it's going to grow and what's going to happen. And it's fun just seeing like the little things that change, like you and I will text like every week, be like, well, oh, we'll change this. Let's change this too. And it's just so fun. <laughs> to, like the little things that change are what, you know, keep us progressing forward and everything that we do. Um, and I think that that's so awesome for you. And I can't wait to see, um, what's going to come out of spark, um, the next few months, let alone the next few years. 
Um, but so that wraps up our questions and this has just been so fun. Um, and I thank you for sharing a different side of you than you normally show on the show, um, and agreeing to sit on the other side of the mic. Um, for those of you that have learned something about Dwayne and enjoyed this chat and you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, hit the like, hit the love button and comment me in the comment box. (laughs) Um, and maybe we'll do more, um, types of these episodes in the future if you guys loved it. So let us know. So thank you again, Dwayne, for coming on your own show and being a guest this week, (laughs) for letting me take over um, your child, your baby. Um, So fun. So thank you for all of you who jumped on the Facebook Live tonight, listened on the podcast, and for those of you who caught the replay, either within our Healthy Runner group or on our Spark Your Training YouTube channel. Hold on, Allie. I'm sorry. I I do need to interrupt you. And like, thank you. I need to (laughs) thank you for doing that. You were like amazing. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I think I'm going to get some like requests of like, hey, Dwayne, like, you know, toss your microphone aside. Let Allie take some episodes here. This is actually good to know, honestly, that in case something happens, I like I have, I have someone like <laughs> who could take care of this. You can sit in and be a guest host. Always, I like it. Always willing to do it. I had yeah. so much fun. Well, I've known you for so long now and literally watched you grow up. I feel like I'm so old right now. <laughs> and like one of your parents, right. Speaking um, and just seeing like the person that you've grown into and, you know, knowing everything that you do behind the scenes for our podcast, for our community. Um, I just love working with you and you are like such a joy to work with. And um, you've been so helpful at the growth of this podcast and this business. So I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, like, thank you. Um, and thank you for doing this. This is fun. This is awesome. Yeah. I was nervous in the beginning, but it, it wound up being really fun. Yeah. So fun. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for you said, I absolutely adore being part of spark. And like I told you before we started, maybe I'll start being a runner too. Yes. Yes. Hopefully. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Dancer to runner story. Another one. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe some updates coming soon. But we'll um, interview you on your yes. running journey. Oh, on yes. your first like couch to 5K <laughs> program. Yes. You're going to be a guest. Studio to the streets. That's yeah. it. We're going to spark off 2022 as a runner. Mm-hmm. Allie's running journey. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Creating content already in advance. Oh, there it is. We're ready to go. <laughs> All right. I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to let you close up the show. Thank you guys for jumping on here. Thank you for doing this. This has of been course. super fun. Awesome. So remember every week we go live within our Healthy Runner Facebook group, check out the events tab within our group, and you can see all the guests and topics that we have lined up coming up. So you can join the conversation and get your uh, questions answered. So thank you again, Dwayne, and thank you to our audience. And remember, stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running. Till next time, guys. Bye. Bye.